away and I simply come longing just to bring something that's a warmth that will bless your heart I'll bring you more than a song for a song in itself is not what you much deeper within, through the way things appear, you're looking into my heart. I'm coming back to the heart of worship, and it's all about you, it's all about you, Jesus. I'm sorry, Lord, for the Well, good morning, everybody. Uh, my name is Ron McAlpine. I'm the minister here at Benihi Church in Kirkcaldy, and this is our worship for Sunday, the 21st of March. At the moment, we are journeying through Lent, and later on, we're going to hear an episode in the life of Jesus near the time of Easter, which starts with a great wee phrase, we want to see Jesus. But more than that, later on. I want to welcome everybody um, to our time of worship and I want to leave you with a little thought. On one of my recent podcasts I was thinking about the dramatic encounter between uh, Saul and Jesus on the Damascus Road and the question is this, when was Saul converted? He would later on become of course the Apostle Paul. When was he converted? On the Damascus Road, when he encountered Jesus, the dramatic bit. In his three days of darkness, when he went blind. Or when the eyes were opened and he could see again. When was Saul converted? Let me know your thoughts. In the meantime, a warm welcome to everybody to our time of worship. We begin our worship with a reflective prayer. 
the words in bold you can say them into yourself you can say them out loud let us come together and let us worship God our call to worship and let all the darkness of our souls vanish before the beams of your brightness and open us to the treasures of your wisdom perfect what you have begun and what your spirit has awakened us to ask turn your face unto us and show us your glory and our peace shall be perfect amen jeremiah chapter 31 verses 34 to 36 None of them will have to teach a neighbour to know the Lord, because all will know me, from the least to the greatest. I will forgive their sins, and I will no longer remember their wrongs. I, the Lord, have spoken. The Lord provides the sun for light by day, the moon and the stars to shine at night. He stirs up the sea and makes it roar. His name is the Lord Almighty. He promises that as long as the natural order lasts, so long. Will Israel be a nation? Our prayers for this morning. Let us pray. On the journey, what do we expect and who will we meet? In worship, as we now gather together, we are apart, but our unity is held by God in our many places our gathering is one on the journey do we remember the dramatic moments when god encountered us on the road they will be few we reflect on our times of darkness when we have sat and waited for christ to take our hand those times are many On the journey, when has the Spirit of God opened our eyes that we might see again? New ways ahead, one step at a time. On the journey, receive who we are. Accept what we have done. Forgive our mistakes. Listen to our anxieties celebrate our success and walk with us the way ahead is god's vision for our future give us eyes to see and let us be part of it so be it amen to bear his heart will
Verses 20 to 33. Some Greeks seek Jesus. Some Greeks were among those who had gone to Jerusalem to worship during the festival. They went to Philip, he was from Bethsaida in Galilee, and said, Sir, we want to see Jesus. Philip went and told Andrew, and the two of them went and told Jesus. Jesus answered them, The hour has now come for the Son of Man to receive great glory. I am telling you the truth. A grain of wheat remains no more than a single grain unless it is dropped into the ground and dies. If it does die, then it produces many grains. Those who love their own life will lose it. Those who hate their own life in this world will keep it for life eternal. Whoever wants to serve me must follow me so that my servant will be with me where I am. And my father will honour anyone who serves me. Jesus speaks about his death. Now my heart is troubled, and what shall I say? Shall I say, Father, do not let this hour come upon me, but that is why I came, so that I might go through this hour of suffering. Father, bring glory to your name. Then a voice spoke from heaven. I have brought glory to it, and I will do so again. The crowd standing there heard the voice, and some of them said it was thunder, while others said, an angel spoke to him. But Jesus said to them, It was not for my sake that this voice spoke, but for yours. Now is the time for this world to be judged. Now the ruler of this world will be overthrown. When I am lifted up from the earth, I will draw everyone to me. 
In saying this, he indicated the kind of death he was going to suffer. It's just over a year ago since the first case of COVID-19 was found in Scotland and a little over a year ago since the first death from COVID. And so here we are now looking forward to, if I can put it that way, to the first anniversary of lockdown. It's been the toughest of years. So much loss and so much tragedy. We feel somewhat helpless to know what to do. How can we respond? Well, it may seem like not much, but I think it stands for a lot that we are going to light for lives on the 23rd of March at 7 p.m. You're simply invited to light a candle at your doorstep. You don't have to leave home right where you are to light a candle. And in that small way, we will be saying we haven't forgotten and we will remember all those who have suffered and all the tragedy that people have been through. So you can find all the details on social media and through the church's pages. Light for Lives, Tuesday the 23rd of March at 7pm. Please join me in lighting a light. A prayer to remember a year on from the COVID-19 pandemic. Lord of life and light, where there is darkness, let your light shine, the light that brings new life. As we remember those who have lost their lives, we pray let your light shine. As we remember those who are left, whose lives have changed, we pray let your light shine. As we remember those in these difficult times, we pray let your light shine on all of us and before us to see a way through and beyond. Let your light shine on the whole of creation today, tomorrow and forever. In the name of Jesus, who is light and who is life for all. Amen. It's a great wee phrase, we want to see Jesus. Now, if I was Philip, I'd be asking them why. Maybe he did. Come on guys, my man's busy, he doesn't have much time. Why do you want to see him? Or maybe he felt it wasn't his place to ask. There seems to be a bit of a pecking order going on here. The gatekeeper, well that's Philip, not your most famous of the disciples. And then he tells Andrew, one of the inner circle. Then both of them go off to find Jesus and tell him, there's a request here from the Greeks. They want to see you. It would have been good to know why. What is strange is that Jesus doesn't actually answer the request. He doesn't seem to respond to the Greeks at all. I don't even know if they ever got an audience with him. Certainly not recorded. His answer is not even for Philip or for Andrew. It is what John the author wants us to understand about life and death and love and he wants to put into some kind of context the words of Jesus to come. There's a purpose. Now the stories of scripture and those of Jesus in particular were very often about nature. We might call them organic. You know Jesus doesn't talk about structure or mechanics strategy or institution. Here is the image of death before life. Now is that not the wrong way around? I can almost hear you shouting at the computer screen or at least into yourself. No, no, I can see that. What Jesus is talking about here is resurrection. Oh tough hindsight. 
You see, I'm not convinced that either Philip or Andrew would have understood his words quite so easily. The image tells us that the power of resurrection is love. Without love, no growth. Now, I'm equating here love of God with hatred of self. It's not that we have to despise ourselves. I'm sure that's not the point John is wanting to make. What he's trying to say is you need to love God more. And service, well, that's about following. And honour, well, that's all about service. There's a lot going on here. John, in this passage, is packing in his theology. The mood changes. Are we now in a different place? Are we part of a different conversation? Um, for some reason, John seems to have linked these narratives together. Now, the themes are similar the mood is much darker. We're now talking about suffering and it's personal. Now if we knew what was to come we too would ask for it to be removed. Is there no other way? Now does this imply that Jesus had a choice? Could he have just walked away and said not going through with it? The answer has to be yes. Otherwise, his words, his cry makes no sense. Yet, the grain of wheat must die. You see, to Jesus, death had a purpose. It was to glorify God and in his death bring life. That was enough for him to say, OK, let's get on with this. Let's do it ever wanted to be somewhere that God speaks? Did you hear that? I think it was thunder. No, no, no. Must have been an angel. Oh, get away. I would like to think the Greeks were part of the crowd and got to see Jesus. I was for you. Listen up. God speaks of glory. You know, you could almost imagine the crowd drawing in around Jesus. Maybe God will speak again. Well, John certainly loves his theology. And time does not allow me to begin to unpack his words. He says to the crowd, and he says to us, Change is coming. Power will be overthrown. I will be lifted up. We know the end of the story. And that's the Easter story. But the crowd would need to wait. Maybe, just maybe, some of those people in that crowd would welcome Jesus into Jerusalem. Maybe the Greeks would have been there. Others might have been part of a different crowd and would shout for the release of Barabbas and demand Pilate to crucify Jesus. What are we to make of all this? There will be times in our lives when we want to see Jesus and we get a response different from the one that we were hoping for. To a request, a different narrative, maybe an uncomfortable story of death to life and how we must live. If there is a theme that runs through all of these events, it is one of a world and its values turned upside down. Death leads to life and glory comes by the public humiliation and suffering of execution on a cross. We are told that God draws people to himself but only through a wisdom that is seen as foolish in the eyes of the world. If we want to see Jesus, we need to be prepared to look directly in the face of love and live in a different way. The way of the kingdom, the world as God wishes it to be. Stay connected. 
Stay safe. Till the next time. Amen. Now, send us from this place with these words. Go in peace this day and forevermore. Just right, join in, keep going, cool song, sweet music, pure music, sweet music to my ears, cause we
we all need encouragement. I do believe we all need encouragement. Like the air we breathe, we all need encouragement. I do believe we all need encouragement. Like the air we breathe. Come on, come on, come on. 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 You're great. You're smart. You're cool. You're kind. You're right. You're sun. You're in. You're fine. Sweet music. Pure music. Sweet music to my ears. Cause we all need encouragement. I do believe we all need encouragement. Like the air we breathe, we all need encouragement. I do believe we all need encouragement. Like the air we breathe. That's great. That's great. Good, job. Good job. Come on. Come on. Just, right. Just right. Join in. Join in. Keep, going. Keep going. Cool song. Cool song. Sweet music. Good music. Sweet music to my ears. We all need encouragement. I do believe we all need encouragement. Like the air we breathe. We all need encouragement. I do believe we all need encouragement. Like the air we breathe. Come on, come on, come on. 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 Come on, come on. Really lovely, but it's time to stop.